My fellow Americans, we now have some explosive developments from Arizona and Michigan. The Maricopa County election trainers were caught on undercover video admitting they can't stop third-party ballot harvesting. County recorder Stefan Richter suddenly deleted his ex account. In Detroit, two ballot totes were captured on camera, being wheeled away from a precinct chairman's SUV before a mysterious accident. Meanwhile, Kerry Lake is surging in Arizona with a stunning 80% share of new ballot drops. The establishment claims everything's fine, but the footage we're about to show you tells a very different story. So as we watch election integrity concerns unfold, let me tell you about another way to protect yourself from those who might try to manipulate the truth. Just like election observers keeping a watchful eye on ballot counting, this revolutionary dash cam captures every detail on your daily drives. With crystal clear 4K resolution, advanced night vision, it is your personal witness on the road. Don't let anyone twist what really happened. Visit CarVisionX.com now for your dash cam with free express shipping. Remember, in a world where the truth is constantly questioned, video evidence speaks louder than words. Who knows? Maybe you catch some ballot harvesters on your dash cam. Now, my friends, the pattern is clearly undeniable. But first, we have this Arizona fraud alert. Kerry Lake is beating Kamala Harris while losing to Gallego by 50,000. While Kamala Harris, Kerry Lake is beating Kamala Harris while losing to Ruben Gallego by 50,000. Hmm, how do you do that? How do you beat one side, but then not the other? There's only one, there's only one reason that could be happening. Hmm? It's because they're importing votes just for the one candidate because they're that stupid. Gallego has 100,000 more votes than the Democrat congressional candidates in Arizona. Is the RNC awake or sober? Look at these numbers. Okay. We have too close to call. This is, uh, we'll see, this came out 12 hours ago. Donald Trump over Kamala Harris, and the vote count is 1,167,890. But yet, we have Kerry Lake in the Senate race, one hundred and. 1,182,270. So how can she have fewer votes than Donald Trump? It makes no sense. See, Donald Trump at the top there, look at that. 1,300,000, You would think that Carrie Lake would have that same number, right? Because most Republicans, they just vote straight ticket. That doesn't make any sense. Those numbers should be uh, the same, or if not, very close. So there's some serious hanky-panky going on. Man, Carrie Lake, she just can't get a break. I love that woman. I love her. I would love to see her just hit that Senate floor and kick ass all day long. Just sweep the shit right out of that Senate floor. That's what it needs. And Carrie Lake, I know she would do it. You know, I, lo- I know she would love going in front of the cameras and just roasting the press. I mean, she's a master when it comes to that. And that's why I think they're, they're trying so hard. They need to keep that Senate seat. They cannot afford to have Carrie Lake go to Washington, D.C. I mean, they couldn't have her be the governor either. They stole that from her. So they're going to steal the Senate race. Well, guess what? They're going to keep counting. They're going to keep looking. They're going to keep finding. And Carrie Lake, at some point, she will have her day over these corrupt Democrat political machines, these, 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 ugh, these demons. Okay, so Harmeet Dillon posting 10 hours ago, Arizona update, there are lawyers and trained observers monitoring the tabulation of ballots, duplicating and adjudication. Until we are done, I'm in constant touch with Kerry's lawyers and supporters about this, and we are watching every ballot drop. Why do we have to go through this? Why does Kerry Lake have to go through this again? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we had a clean presidential election, but why are we still dealing with this garbage in Arizona? It has to end. At least Harmeet Dillon's on the ground. You know, they put her in place before this election because they knew there was going to be some shenanigans in Arizona and they're, they're doing their best. James O'Keefe reporting eight hours ago, Maricopa County recorder, Stefan Richter deleted his ex account following reports of slow ballot counting. <laughs> This comes after O'Keefe's media group 
released footage of Maricopa County election trainers claiming they cannot stop third party ballot counting. Really? Ballot harvesting with one sitting. It's not our job to do that. And the tapes are here. At their home. No. For just two weeks. I had one question about um, drop off ballots. Are we allowed to say anything? Because it is no. a felony for people to turn in ballots outside their home. No. We're just two weeks away from the presidential election, we are inside recording the trainings. We take you inside Maricopa County, Arizona, where election trainings are now in full swing. Meet Amy Bricker. She's an election trainer from Maricopa County. She says if poll workers spot ballot harvesting activity, it is not their job to police that illegal activity. Check this out. As a poll worker, it's not your responsibility to, yeah. to police that. We're, okay. we're not any type of law enforcement. During yet another election poll watching training session at Maricopa County's election office, a, another citizen journalist discovered that federal agents from the DOJ will be inside those election centers. Again, all of this recorded by volunteers, citizen journalists, and poll watchers there in Arizona. What would be some reasons why the Department of Justice would need to show up at your poll center? They could be following up on a lawsuit or just coming to monitor things for this election. Wow. Oh, there's more friends. Here it is. Check this out. This is the video. This came from uh, True the Vote. Two ballot totes caught on camera being wheeled away from a possible precinct chairman's SUV. Suspect was allegedly heading to Detroit's Department of Elections when he was involved in an accident. And here's the footage. No sound on this. And it's difficult to make out what is exactly happening here or which cars were involved in the accident. But there's an SUV involved and looks like there's a box truck involved. And the allegation here is that they are moving ballots somewhere in Detroit. Elon Musk posting this message. Propaganda is far less effective when there is a real-time source of truth on X. If you've been following this channel as long as uh, you know we've been around, you can see this new format that we're doing we're just pulling exclusively from x and we're, we're 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 collecting all the information we're sorting it digesting it processing it and presenting it to you and uh that's what this channel's for to push back on the narratives to give you real-time information that you won't find anywhere else so make sure you're following us on x uh he was quote tweeting the rabbit hole he says what's notable about the trump victory is it happened despite biased legacy media coverage. New media like X and podcasts help circumvent the narrative gatekeepers so people could hear the other side. I'm not sure this outcome would have been possible otherwise. Think about that for one second. A lot of people are giving Joe Rogan a lot of credit for helping uh, tip the scales right at the end. I saw a lot of posts on X. People were clearly stating that it was Joe Rogan's interview that finally made them jump to Trump. Now, X, imagine if, if, if Elon Musk had not purchased X and we still had the same censorship apparatus in place. Remember when the Twitter files dropped and they disclosed how the FBI just had a back channel to the top brass at X and they were flagging content all day long, which is directly contradictory to the oath of office to uphold the constitution because free speech is our first amendment right. But then you have FBI agents who are willing to send messages demanding that accounts, well, they weren't really demanding. See, they were, they were, they're just using very choice words. We think this one might be in violation of your terms of service. See, they get they get X to change the terms of service so that they can go ahead and flag any content. And then the FBI comes in and says, oh, we think you need to, this is in violation of your terms of service. So they're not te technically they're not violating the Constitution. They're just enforcing 
Twitter's terms of service for them, which is which is ludicrous. So imagine if that actually was still going on, and you didn't have the free flow of information that we had during this this election cycle. I mean, I've never felt more free to go on X and post than in my entire existence on X, because. I was all, I, I mean, even during the pandemic, all the things we had to deal with, the censorship was atrocious. But now I don't have that same fear to go and post and be like, oh, what's going to happen? So it's very clear that the open avenue of free speech for everyone, not just conservatives or Trump supporters or, you know, leftist, progressive communists, everyone gets a chance to speak. And that's what's beautiful. And that's why we saw in the last clip, we saw the uh, MSNBC and we saw them uh, on The View melting down about, oh, how, how dare they speak freely? But of course, CNN thinks you're stupid. Do you see this clip? CNN calls out Trump voters for lack of education. Yeah, they think you're too dumb. But just down here, it's a battleground state. The battleground states tend to hug the national average. About 43% of Americans have a college degree. About 57% have no college degree. They hug the national average. But now you see some of the diversity within the state. Watch the graph as I go oh, just down here in those counties that Trump was winning. You see what happens? The percentage of college degrees go way down, right, in the area of the Trump base. So let's, let's bring this back up. That's statewide again, right? Watch the number. This is no college degree. That's college degree. Then you can mention the more affluent suburbs. Let's pick Montgomery County. You see the percentage of the college degrees dump, jump out. Non-college degrees go back. What happened? Biden won it big. Harris won it big. So it is it's a battleground. Okay, so let's get something straight here. These people that are going to get these college degrees, they go and they get indoctrinated with leftist ideology. It happens. They they go to college. They're they're conservative. They come out completely brainwashed leftists, never daring to question anything that comes out of government. Completely lost in the actual true message of freedom in our constitutional foundation, ready to surrender their rights at the drop of a hat, ready to mask up, back up, and lock up at a minute's notice. So they think the people don't have a college education, they're just too stupid. No, they're actually smarter, in my opinion, because they haven't been brainwashed. CNN thinks that's a, a bad thing. And of course, we have this. You hear about this? 20 million votes. This big question. Yeah, we got a clip from Joe Rogan here. Well, let's just play Joe Rogan first. Number of people that vote. what do you think about that thing I sent you today that compares the number of people that voted in 2020 versus the number of people that voted in 2024 and in 2016? Sure does look strange. And in 2012, I, have you seen it, Jamie? Yeah, I did. It's so crazy. You look at it and you go, "There's is this real?" Oh, here it is. Because it doesn't seem to make any sense because this is like one of the most consequential uh, elections ever. I think everybody's pretty aware of that. And everybody is very dug in on their side. The left, he's Hitler. The right, he's saving us. And so more people voted, at least, at least the indication would be, as much people voted in 2020, if not more, probably more people voted. But let's look at the numbers. Like, look at the difference in how many people voted for Biden in 2020 it's unprecedented it's way higher than any other time since 2012 and I'm, I'm sure probably before that there was less people back then right so if you go back to when i was a kid there's only like 200 million people in this they country this. yeah and and to be clear 2012 and 2016 were not low turnout no, years no they're like, all consistent yeah. this is what's crazy they're consistent look they're all like 60 look at look at where the number is it's all like 65 million is that what it says mm -hmm. So that's all the same every fucking time except 2020 and 2020 it goes way the fuck up Look at it. It's like 80. What is it? 82? Is that what it was it's like 81 and change like 81 yeah. so it goes up a fucking sizable chunk
What do you think about that thing I sent you to? So here's a here's a closer look. I wanted Brian to go full screen. He didn't hear me, but this is the this is the chart he's he's showing everybody. Okay, this has been going around. You've probably seen it, but on the far left you got 2012. The blue line obviously represents the Democrat popular vote. In 2016, there you have it. 2020, look at that huge spike. And then in 2024, the number returns to normal. The only thing that I can draw from this chart is that all those votes, completely fake votes, completely fraudulent. Like, where did those votes, where, where are those voters? Because you have now three election cycles that show nearly identical turnout. But then you have this bizarre anomaly. This is just more evidence that the 2020 election was stolen. I'm not going to go back and, you know, and relitigate all those points. But the next time a New York Times reporter comes up to me and asks me, where's my evidence? I'm going to stick this chart in his face. And say, you explain to me where these votes are. What happened to these people? Yeah, that happened at an event I was emceeing. And I made the declaration. And a freaking New York Times reporter was in the audience. He came right up after me. What's, had a microphone, stuck it in my face. What's your proof? How do you know? You know, it was ridiculous. But here you go. There's, there's, there's more evidence for you. And you can see here are the numbers. <laughs> Look at that. And it's pretty, it's pretty consistent. 2004, 121 million. 2008, 129 million. 2012, 126 million. 2016, 128 million. 2020, 155 million votes. 2024, back to 129 to 2016 levels. <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. So anyone have any idea where those voters are? Let's hear what um, Rachel Maddow had to say. This one time. But let me also point out something more strange, which has been happening at the same time and it hasn't had as much attention. The day before Trump made those remarks on Friday, on Friday, he said, you're never going to have to vote again after you vote for me this one time. The day before that, on Thursday last week, he didn't say that people wouldn't have to vote anymore once he was elected this November. Now, the day before that, on Thursday, he told his supporters, not that they're not going to have to vote again, but that they don't have to vote this time, that they don't need to vote for him this November. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. He said that on Thursday last week. And it turns out this is something, when you look, he says this all the time now. But My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. We don't need votes. I tell my people, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. I don't need votes. We don't need votes. We got more votes than... Anybody's ever had. You don't have to vote. Don't worry about voting. The voting, we got plenty of votes. Don't worry about voting. Of all the weirdness around this campaign, this is a truly strange thing to tell people, right? <laughs> don't vote. I don't need your vote. I don't want your vote. I mean, all the surface level weirdness is, you know, worth noting. Having a new position on literally anything you can think of as soon as any random rich guy tells you to, that's a weird thing. Picking the eccentric billionaire. Okay, enough of you. Enough of you. Enough. Let's get back to what's going on here. In Arizona, new batch just got released from Arizona. Kerry Lake has surged again. Lake 80.2%. Gallego 17.7%. Negative 2,836 ballots from Yavapai County. 60,000 ballots still to be counted. Kerry Lake is now only 50,000 votes behind. That was released seven hours ago. So, folks, lots going on. This chart, though, tells a story. 
Make sure you bookmark this. Make sure you go to our X account, you find this. In fact, let me retweet this right now so you can find it. It'll be at the top of my feed right now. So the pattern is undeniable from Arizona's ballot counting irregularities to Michigan's mysterious ballot transport incidents. We're seeing a system that's either broken or being manipulated, but here is what's different this time. Citizen journalists and Patriot poll watchers captured everything. The days of operating in the shadows are over. Real-time evidence is flowing through social media faster than they can control the narrative. So my question to you is this. What suspicious election activities have you witnessed in your area? Share your experiences in the comments below because the truth will prevail.